Since the formation of the European Union, it has sought to lead the world in climate policy. This global leadership is discussed in a new report for the Global Warming Policy Foundation by energy analyst Dr John Constable, which examines EU climate policy from its origins through to the current energy crisis. Until now, we have not been able to look at the price for climate change. But now it is evident that there is also a price to climate change. At face value, the EU's policies are an attempt to internalise the externalities attributed to emissions from energy consumption, the harms caused by global warming, and to incentivise emissions reduction. One of the main ways in which the EU has sought to achieve its goals, observes Constable, is through the European Emissions Trading System, or ETS. Since 2005, the ETS has set a cap on the total amount of greenhouse gases companies can emit each year Companies hold enough allowances to cover their emissions or face significant fines. Don't have enough? Cut your emissions or buy extra allowances from another emitter. But the ETS came at a high price to both producers and consumers. Between Poland, Spain, Italy, Germany and the UK, 47 billion euros of revenue were collected from the ETS in the third trading period, which now costs 17 billion euros a year. These costs undermined industries and EU member states had to find ways to mitigate the harm done to competitiveness. In France, 37% of income from allowance trading went to subsidise energy-intensive users. Compensation for German companies reached €546 million Euros in 2020. This demonstrates that the ETS put targets ahead of reality and required further interventions to correct the problems caused by irrational policies. The European Union is the world leader in the development of renewable energy. It intends to stay in the lead and is committed to reaching the objective of 20% of renewable energy by 2020. A second arm of EU policy aimed to increase the proportion of Europe's energy use from renewable sources. In general, EU member states implemented renewable targets by subsidising developers to offset considerable increased capital costs and to incentivise investment. This has increased energy production since 1990 by driving wind, solar and biofuels, but not hydropower. Relative to population, this has made the EU a world leader in renewable energy deployment. But most of this growth has been driven by countries where renewable energy deployment has been in turn driven by subsidies, increasing costs to the consumer. Between 2008 and the end of 2021, the EU27 has subsidised the renewable sector by €770 billion. Euros. Subsidies to renewable energy in the EU27 now exceed €70 billion Euros a year, mostly to solar and offshore wind. Despite these interventions, renewable energy has displaced little total energy consumption. Renewables, excluding hydro, account for just 20% of power production for a very large price. This rise in prices has forced a decline in the use of electricity, which now stands at the level last seen in the year 2000, having fallen 9% from a peak in 2007. Constable observes that although renewable energy is credited with displacing coal from the energy mix, this reduction in coal use may have instead mainly been caused by generators switching to natural gas. Gas is able to provide both reliable baseload supply and respond to variation. If Constable's analysis is true, then the transition from coal to gas could have been more affordably executed. To find out more, watch the other videos in this series and download the report from the GWPF website.